Urbana-Champaign, I experienced what's called a psychotic episode. I started having, having delusions or illusions of grandeur. I was under bridges and on top of houses, but at the time I didn't realize I had a mental illness. I just thought, I just can't keep a job for some reason. It was hard for me to get housing because of a record from seven years ago. I was in charge of the whole produce section at a, a Jewel. And I was doing great, you know, and uh, then I had my first breakdown and it screwed everything up. Supportive housing, I think, is a very critical model in that it's permanent housing and it provides the whole range of services that a resident in that housing environment might need. So it could be providing access and help getting into an education, getting a job, uh, if there's need for substance abuse treatment, getting people that service, if there's need for mental health treatment, getting them counseling or uh, access to psychiatrists. It really is meeting a resident wherever they are and then moving them up the ladder so that they can become self-sufficient, independent uh, members of society. In Springfield, we are really struggling um, to continue to fund these kinds of models. But with the federal government and the community and housing providers, partnering with us, it makes it a really good cost-effective model. It's a small check we write for a big return. Words cannot describe the elation when I saw the apartment itself and started to imagine being part of this community, this neighborhood. The woman who happens to be the landlady of the building, we're good friends. She has an extraordinarily gifted sense of humor. We work with over 70 landlords in the Joliet area. People don't know that our clients are in a supportive housing program. Nobody knows the difference and it's, it's really nice. It just fits in well because they're in scattered sites. In a supportive housing environment, they're really becoming part of the fabric of the place. I think it absolutely has something to do with um, having long-term investment in the neighborhood now. It's your home. So you do have a pride of taking care of it. Hey, Patches. How are you? I need my meds to keep me sane, to help me keep me centered. Because I went through a spell of that too. I would take my meds, I'd say, okay, I'm feeling better now, I don't need them. Then I would backslide. And then supportive housing would teach me, no, you've got to continue taking them even though you're feeling good. I have a stable life for once in my life. If people didn't have access to supportive housing such as ours, they would be in psychiatric facilities, they'd be hospitalized, uh, they'd, there'd be more incarcerations, they'd be on the streets. It's hard asking for help, but it's not hard to ask my case manager. Laura comes over and we talk about looking for jobs, what goals I have reached, where I was at and where I'm headed to. We're providing the rental assistance and the resources for supportive services and our job is really to help transition the families from relying on emergency systems to relying on preventative systems. Recently there was a study done of 177 supportive housing residents and it looked at how much public service they were using uh, was getting spent for them two years before they entered supportive housing and then again two years after they entered supportive housing and um, what was found was that on average in a yearly reduction of two thousand four hundred dollars in how much people were having to use services and it's because you no longer had to have as many days in an emergency room because they were staying healthy they were getting the services they need fewer days in jail fewer medicaid costs because again they were getting preventative and wellness services fewer mental health and substance abuse treatment kinds of costs. The list goes on. So it's a very proven, effective program. In the next uh, th uh, three to five years, we, we have made commitments to move thousands of people out of the nursing homes and into the community setting. I spent 27 years of my life in a nursing home. When I moved out of the nursing home, I felt that there was a good chance I'd be truly happy. I think we're very confident that the idea of doing patient-centered planning will assure that when they're in the community, they will have a much better life with more independence than you can in an institutional setting. Transitioning folks from nursing homes into the community is a real process of providing support. We firmly believe that with the correct level of support. A person with a mental illness can transition and live in the community successfully just like anybody else. Eighty-nine 
99% of residents who get into a supportive housing environment stay housed. That's huge success. I think that it's so easy to fund this program because it's such a small amount of money for what you get. So it's just the most humane form of housing. It's just the most normalizing way that people can be treated. I really believe in supportive housing. I really do. It's amazing. It's phenomenal the difference it's making in people's lives. Cornerstone was a life-saving experience for me, continues to be a life-saving experience for me. Supportive housing actually changed my life. Supportive housing is very important. Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, could live on their own and not be in a nursing home. Overall, I'm just happy that we're stable. 